right, Jeremy Duckworth, racer guy, here with Andrew Hillian. We're gonna talk about some tires. Yeah. Because karting, seems like the most popular thing in karting is tires. I guess racing in general, that. everybody wants fast tires. Yep. Um, I'm pretty new at karting. There's a lot more going on with tires that I see than, I mean, there's a lot, dirt racing in general, everybody's grooving, siping tires, but it just seems like to be a little bit different art on karting that I've noticed. Yeah. For with sure. the preps, um, seem like a lot of people are doing a lot of different things to them. So you've helped me a lot getting my cart running. I've tried. <laughs> yeah, you've um, Andrew's really helped me get. I mean, you've helped me get every. I mean, the cart was it was new and yeah. it was sliding around. Um, you prepped my first set of tires for me and um, helped me. I mean, it turned, got traction. Yeah. So. That's a good thing. Yeah. So I'm learning too, but um, so I just kind of, and we're doing an indoor race this coming week, and an indoor racing right now in the winter time is pretty big. Yep. So I just kind of want to see like what you think as far as like indoor racing versus outdoor, if there's a difference. Um, um, just kind of see what you, what you think. And I'm trying to learn about tires. Right. Um, there can be quite a big difference. Just you know the weather. Plays, plays a big part in it, keeping tires warm in, in, the, in the cold wintertime, you know. Um, and obviously, you know, summertime, the tires are gonna be hot no matter what. Uh, I, think, I think indoor season's a lot harder on tires just because you're trying to, you know, keep them warm before you go out and race because, you know, if the tire's cold, you're not gonna get any prep in it, obviously, so you really gotta, it's, it's just a lot different from outdoor racing. Mm -hmm. so that's what I've figured out for sure. And that's one thing, like, because I mean, I grew up racing modifies and late models. You couldn't have this yeah. in a track. Of the, yeah. you, know, you, you could have put this on your tires out in the open. Right. And, I mean, there's still some people I think that do. Not that anybody's going to use this information for anything but Cardi, but you couldn't really just like put a prep in a tire. Yeah, yeah you get DQ'd <laughs> real quick. Yeah. And, yeah, there, it wouldn't it wouldn't fly. That's for sure. So, like, what is the trick, or like, what what are the different preps that you use for different track conditions? Or so, whenever you're you're trying to buy a prep line, every every certain guy that has a whole prep line, he's going to have a description of each prep that he sells, and you really got to you really got to research each, each prep, and he'll have a whole description. Uh, most of them will of you know when to use it, what to use it, you know the track conditions to use it for, what duro tire to use, you know the stuff like that, and uh, a lot of a lot of times you know you'll have an aggressive, you know a uh, a conditioner weekly, and then you'll have like a, a a purple or green, just all kinds of different stuff, and you just really got to research, it, get into it, and figure out what what it's used for. And that's so. kind of like what we're, I mean, I guess this is Donnie and all. Yeah, this is Donnie and all insanity. And this is what we're, I guess this is what we're on right now. Yeah, I've much. been on it for, uh, I've been kind of back and forth, kind of, you know, between him and Precision. Uh, starting to figure out that I like insanity better for around here. It worked out, it's worked out pretty good for me, so. So one, one <laughs> thing is just finding a program. Yeah, it's, seems just, to work it's just finding a program you like and easy to get, you know, easy to get prep from, like, you know, stuff like that. But and then you got like your aggressive outside. I know we use black a lot. Oh yeah, definitely and, around um, here. Just different track conditions. If it's dry or something, you go to a right, real sandy like, track. Mm-hmm. For sure. And then. Uh, and then what about the inside? So we, I know we prep a lot on the outsides during the race, just trying to keep the tire fresh, I guess, is what we're looking for. Right. Just keeping them fresh and keeping the tire working. So, I mean, like, I've seen tires come off some of my old race cars and they're just glazed over because they were too hot. Or, right. And, um, but these, there's, I don't ever see a glaze on them. But, um, I mean, I know that they work quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if they were glazed over, that'd be, it'd be bad. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, they don't even know of inside rolling and, you know, they're just going out and wiping, wiping the outside of the tire three or four times and a quarter into the race, that prep that you wiped on the outside is already burnt out. So you really got to, you know, inside rolling is very important, getting that prep up and through the, 
the whole tire, you know, heat cycles and all that kind of stuff. So you really got to get in and out of the tire for sure. Well, how so. do you know what prep are you going to roll inside? Do you just is it um, the same preps most of the time, or do you try to pick like a track condition? And is it something that you know from experience? Inside prep, um, there's only about two to three types of inside prep you can get. There's like an aggressive, and there's just one or two other kinds. I got the aggressive for tracks around here, real sandy, wet, red clay, dirt kind of stuff. But uh, uh, there's a there's different types of inside roll. You know that kind of prep, but uh, that's kind of what we kind of stick to around for around here. But um, yeah, I feel like you know it's just as important on the inside as it's, as it on the outside. So just helps keep that tire fresher. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Makes it last longer in the race too. Yeah, which is important. Yeah, especially leading about ten laps in and the tires fade or yep. something. That's for sure. Um, what about compound? I know a lot of people. I've talked to you to say they don't even look at durometer on a tire. Yeah, uh, duro is really important. Um, I've seen you know people be in competitions to who can get the softest tire, and you know they go out there squalling around the track and stuff. But uh, um, burn it up in the first oh, two yeah. laps. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, typically we we kind of stay in a hard tire, you know, 50, 55, even 45 maybe. Mm -hmm. For around here, we don't do anything lower than that. Um, maybe your your uh, black gumbo moisture tracks, you'll want to run a softer tire, but normally we don't do anything lower than 45. Can but, you do any chassis adjustment with softer tires? I only ask that because my <clears throat> car tends to push. The only, the only adjustments we do tire-wise to chassis-wise will be air pressures. We don't do anything crazy at the track because we change a lot. You're not going to know what worked and what didn't work. So you don't put like a softer tire on if it's pushing right. or something. You might do that, but we kind of just do air pressure adjustments more than anything. So Keep it simple. Yep. That's what I've done so far. Seems to, yeah. seems to work. Works a lot better than taking washers off, moving washers, moving the lifter out and in. You know. yeah. It's a lot easier. And there's no springs or shots really to no, change. So. No jack stands. <laughs> no. It's a lot easier. Yep. So there's no panhard bars, no there's no bars at all. So oh, it's yeah. all yeah, all the tires. So yeah, I was just kinda curious and what you kinda look for in a good tire and besides stagger. I know stagger is also another big chassis oh, yeah. adjustment. For sure. And that has to do with a lot of, you know, the banking in the track and just, you know, what what you're running setup wise on your cart kind of depends on the stagger you'll run also. So there's just so many different things, you know, to keep your tires on point that you got to do. And, you know, I'm working about 20 sets of tires for four or five drivers for next weekend. So yes, getting you got a lot of tires. Yeah. <laughs> getting info from all them, you know, what, you know, just what to do for their liking and it's just uh, it's a lot of work, but it's fun. You learn more that way. So. Mm -hmm. I see. I think I've got a set for me back there, too, somewhere. There's somewhere. A set or two. Yep. For another thing for me on these tires, I'm just this tire wear. I mean, you've got some wear marks here, but it's hard for me to kind of see even like this tire. Like, what a tire. I mean, it's hard. I don't know. It's just hard to tell what how a tire is wearing and what I should be looking for because it's definitely different than my modified that I had. And okay. There's no grooves. I mean, I don't see any chunking, but I was. So basically, you got you got three lines on each side of the tire, and th those are your wear lines for the the sidewalls. And then you got right here, you got two dots, and that'll tell you how much rubber is left on the tire. Okay, which is yeah, your normal wear right. wear marks. And uh, a lot of people don't realize when these lines on the sidewalls they start going away. Mm -hmm. uh, you like this one here. One side will go uh, more than the other, so the inside line, the inside lines tend to wear faster than the outside lines. But uh, once those inside lines go away, that's when you need to flip your tire. Basically, you're flipping it and putting the outside on the inside, okay. and making that inside those inside lines new again. Just keep if that it. makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, I understand about flipping tires because when I was always racing. I didn't have new tires all the time, and I had to make everything go as long as I could. Yeah. So, for the for the budget and, for the budget racer, it's good it's good to flip, you know, and know when your tires are getting worn out. 
but you know for the for the national guys they just new tires so but uh that's a lot how of I people wish I don't could have it. yeah we try to make do with what we got and mm -hmm. for sure so you can definitely tell like this tire here yeah if you ever had this tire on it shouldn't have flipped. i mean oh, yeah. it's completely wore on that side and got three lines on the outside three lines so yeah it's still good on this side yeah, you can tell this was the inside of the tire right here so would you work would you run that one again or um or would you just throw that one at this point since it's completely worn on one side or would you just if it depends how much money you got if for some reason i didn't have the right stagger i needed and that was the only one that fit the stagger mm -hmm. i'd run it but i definitely have to flip it to where the three lines are on the inside you know so get, get all the grip on the inside okay. so it'd still be good I mean, you can still it's still a good tire i don't think tires are done until we start seeing treads so. and that's one good thing i think about actually allowing prep because if you can't prep your tires and condition them it seems like a tire you run it once or twice it's not as fast but right. i feel like if you can prep them right you can take an old tire and still get a lot of life in it oh yeah you can still make it fast again um just like this tire i, I mean that tire looks really good but i mean i feel like some with a couple races on them. I mean, they're not cured or right. anything, and I still feel like you can, you know, yeah. make them fast again. So but that's one thing I do like about prep. Yeah, yeah, it's just figuring out, you know, what to do during the week and then what to do at the track. Um, a lot of people prep too much during the week and not enough at the racetrack, and some people don't prep enough at the at the house and prep too much at the racetrack. So. You gotta really gotta find the fine line mm -hmm. between, you know, just, you know, what, what your tires are like, you know, adapt to the racetrack better. And another, another thing is, you know, most people, you know, after, you know, feature time start, track show black, oh, that's rubber, you know, it's actually prep <laughs> that's... that people have laid down. So that's another thing you gotta figure out is whatever prep will adapt to the prep on the track that's been laid down. So you really gotta, I mean, it's all about taking chances, but once you find what you're, what you're needing, you know, you mm -hmm. hit on it every week, so. That's one thing that shocked me. I thought it was just getting dry slick when I went out yep. to the kart race yep. for the first time. Because that's what I thought, maybe taking rubber, but it's, there's no rubber going down. Yeah, it's all prep, so. And you can walk across, you can feel, oh, yeah. you can feel the prep in your shoe. It's not the same as a rubber down racetrack, for all sure. All sticky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another thing, um, I mean, I just, like I said, I'm new at karting. The only thing I've run so far are pinks and blues. Right. So that's what everyone runs. But there's some other tires out there. And I'm, I mean, Hoosier, yep. I know Hoosier tires pretty well. But what are the different types of tires? I know the Vegas and the Burris. I've never run either one of them. But um, like I said, I'm a little bit intrigued to try the different. They do have different compounds. These are one compound. Right. Right? Yep. So the pinks and blues, you get the you get the one compound. So what is the difference in the tires and when would you run a burst over a pink and blue? Uh, so basically you got uh, your Maxxis, you got your Burris, Hoosier, and uh, you got your Vegas. And then we used to have Unilis, but they stopped making those. And then uh, recently they came out with uh, Cobras. Um, I haven't tried those yet. Looking forward to it though. We, we got, we we're going to get some. I've, I've, ran on just about any type of tire there is and Maxxis is definitely by far the best tire that I've been on. Um, Vegas, they're, they're more of a like moisture track, like wet track type of tire, soft tire, soft as you can get them type deal. Uh, Burris, it's kind of a concrete dry slick type track, you know. And this, these tires, these Maxxis can do it all. You know, is they that, can, just because they're synthetic, you think, or probably that's probably part of it. Just um, a different rubber all the way around, I think. Yeah, but everybody has their own opinions on tires and what they like running. It kind of just depends on what tracks you race at, honestly, more than anything. Um, that seems to be, a, I mean, track condition, yeah, track surface. You got the, the first thing I do whenever I get to the track is I walk out there and immediately think, all right, what am I going to start prepping? Uh, you got to learn with tires. You got to learn to read a track. As soon as you get where you're going, you, you need to analyze it, stick a knife down in the track, whatever it is, and uh, figure out what you need to start prepping. Mm -hmm. You think this is just more versatile tire for you can run maybe a Maxxis pink and blue 
instead of having three sets of Hoosiers or something for track conditions or can you can you tune these more with prep than you could a Hoosier tire or a Burrs? Um, we ran a Mississippi Kart Series a few years ago and it came out with a new type of Hoosier. I can't remember the name of it right off the bat, but we uh, we got three or four sets of them. And uh, the Hoosiers, you don't have to prep them as much. They're actually real rubber. Uh, so you can over prep Hoosiers real easy. So you really got to be careful with those. Um, they're a lot different prep wise and you know, getting them ready, all kinds of this. They're different from Maxis for sure. Uh, in my opinion, Maxis are one of the easiest tires to get ready. Uh, the cut sand, all that kind of stuff. They're probably one of the easiest brands of tires to get ready. Mm -hmm. So less mistakes maybe with Maxis? Yeah. A little easier? Yep. Simple, I guess. For sure. I like simple. I wear my car. Me too. <laughs> simple and make it easier. So, and like over prep, how do you know you've over prepped a tire besides it just like tearing? Um, either your Duro's dropped away too much. Um, say, say you got a 55 set Duro Maxis and you start rolling, putting prep on them, putting prep on them, and before you know it, they're at 42. Mm -hmm. You go on the track, you're squalling, or you're you're just slipping and sliding, you know, stuff like that. Or if you feathered your tires, um, that's a good way to indicate that you you yeah, prepped way too aggressively. You just got them too soft, basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I know all about soft tires or getting them too soft. It's very hard to get a tire, a tire duro to go back up. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to get them to go down, and once you get them down, you're not get, you're not getting them up. It's, mm -hmm. If you do, you're it's gonna take a while. But but if so, like a soft tire, man, say on a late model, too soft a tire, you'll be fast for about ten laps. Yeah, and then you'll start to fade. Yeah, pretty once they go away, yep. yeah, you, you'll go to the back quick. Yep. But for but for the when it's on, you know, you'll be fast. But I don't know, like on these. On the card, is it the same way? If I'm if I'm just too aggressive on tire, am I gonna am I gonna take off? Oh uh, no, you'll probably know right off the bat that just, you've that you've missed on tires. Uh, they don't usually. I've never been in that case where they're just fast out of the gate and just go to crap. I've never had that happen. Mm -hmm. It's usually just kind of slowly gets worse mm -hmm. each lap. But uh, but yeah, I've had it to where. I was just slow at first, and then all of a sudden, I just, that heat cycle kicked in, and that prep really got going. Other than that, what's a good time like for the tires to come in on a feature? Um, I'd say at about five or six laps. If if they haven't came in by then, by five or six laps, you start really building heat inside the tire. Mm -hmm. So if they haven't kicked in by then, you know you probably missed missed on them. But okay, that's what it seems about right. But. Yeah. And if a lot of a lot of it is, you know, after that first caution, if they refire again, and that's when the inside prick comes in a lot, a lot of the time. Because by that first caution, you probably already wore out everything on the outside. So, oh yeah. Good so. to know. Definitely gonna inside prep the tires and roll them. So, so hopefully I'll be in the future. Yep. Another thing I was just gonna ask you, like we were just talking about putting conditioners back in or over. Um, like getting too aggressive on a tire, if you get too aggressive, but like what should, I mean, is there something during the week that I should do to the tire just to make sure that it's like this again? Um, I don't know if I, if I am too aggressive with it, is it junk at that point or is it just maintenance? All right, so basically um, you got your weekly and your weekly is your oils. And for instance, like the yellow, that'll be your conditioner during the week. Um, to get oils back into the tire that you got out from you know racing the previous week, cleaning your tires, simple green takes all that back out. So you gotta put oils back into your tire. And that's what weekly prep is for. Because during race day, whenever you're racing and stuff, you're putting this purple and black and green in your tires, all the solvents, and uh, it's just burning everything out of that tire. So you gotta put your oils back in there. It's like washing your hands with this Dawn soap. It brings all the oils out of your hands. So you gotta use, you know, lotion or something like that, put everything back in there. It's the same thing there. And it just keeps it, I guess like that, just new. It just yep. keeps the tire fresh. For sure. All right. Well, I look forward to this week. I'm glad you're gonna be helping me with tires. Cause yep. 
Need some help in that track, looks a little tricky too. Yeah. I hope I hit it on the head for sure. Yeah. It's a so. lot of work for sure. Hope it pays off. Mm hmm. All right, one more thing I gotta ask you. Because coming from modifieds and late models, first thing I wanna do is I wanna get my. I want to get my groove out and I just want to cut this yep. thing up. Yep. I want to sipe it, cut it all the way across, especially when it's, you know, the track's wet or tacky. Um, and this is what everybody tells me to run is this. We can run a groove tire or, or tread, um, or we can actually groove and sipe as much as we want on it, I guess. Yep. Why, why do we run, why do we run these tires so on dirt? There, there's a lot of, you know, differences. You got, you know, like you said, you got all your big guys. Your big car guys, you know, coming in the cart and seeing what it's all about, and they got treads because that's what they're used to. And they got all your big carter guys on slicks, and there's a lot of button heads on slicks and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to groove these because you'll find out real quick that it wasn't a good <laughs> idea. But you can actually you can buy treads. Uh, Hoosier sells them. Um, I've never personally ran treads, so I, I'm. I wouldn't know much on those. Uh, uh, I'm starting to figure out that, you know, it, treads are the old man, lazy type deal, you know, they just want to leave the cart on the ground, roll out, roll, you know, so. <laughs> it's so much fun though, just running your yeah. groove across and yeah. stuff. I still miss that. <laughs> well, not really actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of work to sit there and cut a tire. Oh yeah, I'd rather prep than do yeah. that. <laughs> Prepping's a lot easier, but yeah, if I don't have to groove them, yeah, if I don't have to groove and slap them, I'm all right with that. You get tired a little bit easier than you do <laughs> prepping. <laughs> Honestly, if I was to go to a track and there's 20 people on treads and one person on slicks, I would bet on the slicks, the guy with the slicks, because uh, I just ran a race a few weeks ago and it, almost everybody was on treads except treads. for me and one other guy and he won. I think I finished fourth, but I came from last or the back. Yeah. And um, everybody else was on tread tires. And I, I don't know if, I couldn't really tell much of a difference or, um, but yeah, the only other guy on slicks out there won the race. He won the heat as well. So like I said, it seems strange to me, but I, it does seem to work. Yeah, like I said, a lot of the people on treads have came from big car backgrounds or have family into it, so they don't really know about, you know, these. Um, but, uh, man, slicks are the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> they are. I love them. I don't think anybody's going to be mounting them on their late model. Anytime, no. But. You might see an asphalt late model <laughs> one, maybe. So. One thing about, I mean, the carts do hook up. Yeah, I will. I mean, they surprisingly, I did not think they would mm -hmm. when I first came in the car. I'm like, what are they doing on these? You know? Yeah, they, they, trends, you know? they make some traction. And like, yeah. the, the cart will hook down to the track. Oh yeah. And it's hard to sometimes get it freed up. And I don't know if the slicks just keep it, help it get freed up, or if it's just I don't know what it is, but stagger too. Stagger has a big part to do with you know setup mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, but they do they do seem fast. And as long as they're fast and people are winning on them, that's what I'm gonna keep running. <laughs> This, there are so many things that you can do wrong to these things, and the first thing people think they got wrong was the prep. Uh, you can get, you could have got your stagger wrong. You could have, you know, you might not have sanded it that week. You, it might be worn out tires. It's just automatically prep, prep, wrong prep. And uh, as of last year, I was starting to figure out that it was more than just prep. So. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been working on. You, you know. can't just throw a prep on it and think it's going to go fast. Yeah. Or you it, can easily still dial, dial yourself out. Like it in is, any race it, car. Like that's it is like way stick. more than prep. You mm -hmm. know, I could tell you that right now. I think there's a lot of people that always beat themselves. Like there are too, mu too much adjustments or, you know, too much thinking. And I don't know. Simple is yeah. fast sometimes. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you hit on something and it works great, but most of the times it's... It's easy uh, to put yourself to the back real quick. And, you know, which you can you can be perfect one weekend and do the perfect perfect round of maxes, you know, do everything right, go out and just kick butt and then run that same set of tires next week when it's last because yeah. you didn't do one thing the same. Mm -hmm. So you really got to stay consistent with them for yeah, sure. Yeah, consistency. That's do the same thing week in and week out. I appreciate everything, and um, I'm looking forward to this weekend, and I'm glad I have you working on my tires. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too, man. Yeah, it'll it'll be, be fun. Yeah, if you can stay out of trouble and not turn anything up, I think it'll be a good weekend. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, 
thank you so much and talk to you next time.